we go through tough moments in life and whenever there is a problem that we face or somebody scolds us so you get some bad customer feedback or something doesn't that play in our mind over and over and over and over again for a long time this fellow scolded at me so unfair I busted this but think about the happy thing that you all just said to others when is the last time you thought about that a while ago Anyone thought of it today itself before I asked you? No. Yesterday? Last week? Last month? Last year? Now, as soon as you started sharing what made you happy and proud, what changed in, in us? You felt more emotional. So you were sad, right? Are you, I achieved that, Balan? No, you, you, you felt happy. Was there more energy? Yes. Did you feel that? You were getting energized of the other people as well. Hearing other people's good things also gave you a boost. Then you said and they went, wow, that's awesome. That gave you another boost. How often do we do this? Not at all. <laughs> now see, it's a small thing, right? But it, it now has changed our mindset. Now it's actually a, a good tip. When you have to give feedback to a, one of your subordinates or the person comes to you with a problem. Boss, I, I don't know. I don't know how to do this. I'm failing, boss. I'm failing, right? Help them to recall some things that they have done in the past where they have been successful. Maybe something entirely unrelated. Because you know what happens. As soon as you think of something you have been successful in and achieved, you feel happy. As soon as you feel happy, or it's actually a way to get happy as well, oxytocin increases in your body, which is a hormone, which gives you a, fear, a sense of security, of happiness, of well-being brings your immunity up, all good things, and brings your stress levels down, brings cortisol down. So now, when you're happy, you're actually able to even find a solution to the problem you thought you couldn't find a solution. Because now you're in solution finding mode. Are you understanding the difference? If I'm in problem finding mode, I will find more problems. Because what we look for, we find. If you're looking for problems, guess what? You find more problems. So in yourself, for yourself, for your children, <laughs> you have to be a leader to your children also. Yes, as parents, we are leaders to our children, right? For your team, for your staff, this is something you can practically do. And for yourself, you get up in the morning, you don't want to go to work, you're having a lot of problems. Consciously recall and think of things you did well, things you were successful in, and you're going to change your brain chemistry, right? It's very simple, really. But simple things sometimes we don't do. <laughs> Journaling helps as well. Depending on what you're journaling. All the problems I had yesterday. But if you're consciously thinking of all the good things that happened yesterday. Absolutely. Absolutely. So think of things that really made you happy, energized. And if somebody comes to you with a problem also, get them into solution mode. Then you will find more solutions. So why do employees fail or underperform? You have a long list, right? Alright. Now look at that list and see which of those cannot be solved by the leader. There's one, tell me. Attitude of the person, very good. Most of the reason that employee fails or underperforms comes back to us. This is bad news and good news, isn't it? So it's bad news because you have no excuse. <laughs> it's good news because it's in your control. You know, if there is an employee who's failing or underperforming, you have the power to change this person. Help this person to become better other than attitude. You are right. So even then attitude just because somebody, some other leader has actually made the wrong uh, recruitment decision. So again comes back to a leadership problem. Don't put it on HR, it's a leadership problem. So it's a lot about perception. How we assess people on commitment, initiative, curiosity, on attitude. All of this according to latest research is not accurate at all. That's scary. Because it's all been colored by our own perception and biases. So if we, if we measure three people on attitude, we might look at all of them differently because of, do I like that guy or not? <laughs> also, right? The human part of us comes into play. So these are also some reasons why employees fail and underperform. And if you really look at it, most of them, all of them are in our control. So we can't wash our hands of things, right? In an organization, if somebody is failing or underperforming, it comes back to bite us. <laughs> Because it's our issue. We need to turn it around. Isn't that empowering as well? Don't you, don't you feel you have more power? We, we, we can do things. 
It's, it's like this, you know, if there's somebody failing and underperforming I, and I feel I can't do anything about it, I'm helpless, right? But now you feel underperforming, I can do something. 